Welcome to Freedom Forest guys, the three acre edible oasis that we're creating here in the south of England. Where we like to try lots of new things and push the boundaries with what we can grow using permaculture and no dig methods. Absolutely no chemicals, weed killers or synthetic fertilizers, just what nature provides. And in today's video, we are really excited to show you how everything is growing in our food forest right now, as this space is just brimming with goodness and activity. We've been eating, giving away, and selling so many strawberries over the last couple of weeks. It really is a good year for strawberries for us here. From this food forest and our moderate sized strawberry patch, we've harvested approximately 15 kg of strawberries over the last two weeks, and they are still coming. We've still got plenty of fruits to ripen off, plenty that need harvesting right now. So we are just loving the strawberries right now. These blueberries here are getting so fat at the moment and they are just starting to ripen off. We should probably put a net over these if we want to make sure that we get a few because usually the birds do just strip them all as they start to ripen. But these ones are just looking fabulous. All of the other um, blueberry bushes are looking quite good as well. But this one, which is um, growing under this cherry plum tree, just seems to be really going for it this year. But you can see this one down here is fruiting. And there's another one over here, which has got a really good amount of fruit on it. But I think these ones must be slightly later varieties because they're not quite as far along as the first one that I showed you. And then over this way, we have got all of our currant bushes. And the currants are just starting to ripen off as well. And we should have another really good harvest of black currants coming soon. So this one's just ripening. Again, we've got lots of different varieties in the food forest, so they are all at slightly different stages. We've got another one down here, a smaller bush. And this one is a little bit further ahead. You can see here, there's actually a couple of black currants which are very nearly ready. And I love the black currants because my favorite thing to do is make black currant cordials. So I'm hoping we'll have a really good crop so I can make lots of that again this year. I'm not sure if they're quite so laden as they were last year, but that might be because the bushes have grown bigger and there's a lot more new growth. So it might be that I'm just not seeing as many of the currants. And then over this way, we've got our gooseberry bushes. We really love our Hinamaki gooseberries. We've got them in green, yellow and red and they all seem to get this slight blush color just as they're starting to ripen before they turn the true color that they're gonna be. We have had a few new friends coming into the food forest in the form of squirrels, which I found out have taken a liking for our white currants, our red currants, and I think some of the gooseberries are disappearing as well. It's normally the birds that get the gooseberries just as they ripen. But yeah, I've been seeing a few cheeky little squirrels hanging around here recently. Yeah, so this is one of the red currant um, bushes that I just mentioned. And you can see we had all full trussels of fruit like that, but slowly they are being stripped away one by one. But yeah, I'm hoping there still be a few left for us to try. 
They can take all of the white currants if they want, but I would like to try some red currants. And yeah, you can see there's a couple just starting to ripen off there. We've got our fig tree over here, which is really having a big growth spurt at the moment. So that's really cool. More black currants all around me here. Again, just starting to ripen up. I do need to get in and have a bit of a tidy up of the white currants because there's a bit of bramble and other stuff going on, but hopefully we'll get to that. And then we've also got our aronia berries here, which again, they're, they're still hanging on. They're a bit slow to ripen. I'm not sure what the time of year is when they should come ripe. So I need to check in on that. And yeah, this is one of our quite stripped white currant bushes here. You can see we've had a few little visitors on this one. Our family pear tree is doing really well this year as well. It's looking really healthy and it's got quite a lot of fruit dotted around on it. And the beauty of this tree is that it's got three different varieties of pears all on one tree. If you like this beautiful shirt that I'm wearing today, then check out our friends at Nick Hooper Design. They source their clothes directly from small villages in places like Guatemala and they also do their own screen printing using natural dyes on natural materials. It's just the kind of stuff we love and I'll leave a link in the comments down below. It's looking like it's going to be a really good year for apples as well. And this is the first time that all of our young apple trees have been really covered in fruit. So we're really looking forward to trying all the different varieties of apples that we've got in here. Over this way, if you follow me, we've also got this little opal plum tree. And this is covered in plums. We actually lost this tree last year um, in amongst all the autumn raspberries that grew up around it. We actually bought another one to replace it. Um, but one of the reasons we cut all of the autumn raspberries right back was to let more light into this area for the young trees and shrubs. And when we found this tree um, and looking at it now, it looks like it's done it a really good favour and it is exactly what it needed and what we hoped for. Over here is our Peasgood No Such apple tree, which is a massive cooking apple tree, grows really, really big apples supposedly, which is why I've always wanted to grow this tree and also because I really like the name. But we're a little bit worried about this tree. It, it's had a bit of a hard time because it was um, a transplanted tree. And then the main stem actually got snapped on it a year or so ago. So we had to cut it right off. But now it's getting all of these big brown welts, maybe some kind of bacteria or something coming up all over it. And some of the branches are dying off. So we've got to look into what could be causing that. Um, so if you have any thoughts on that, please do let us know. But it might be that I have to treat myself to another one of these trees next winter just to make sure that I can get this tree growing. Over here we have got our summer raspberries. And we don't grow so many summer raspberries. Uh, we do tend to focus on the autumn ones more. We find they crop better for us. But these are absolutely loaded with raspberries at the moment. And you can see they're just starting to ripen off. We've got a few more summer ones over here too. Again, absolutely loaded with fruits right now. We do tend to find the birds have a tendency to tuck into the summer raspberries a bit more than the autumn ones. Um, but we'll see how they go because, you know, everything every year 
things are changing, the balance is changing in the food forest. So fingers crossed we might get a few more of these. And yeah, you can see there's one or two ready there. So I might have to pop back for those in a minute. And this is our full sun area. So we just have um, a few annuals dotted around in here and just a few more flowers and whatever kind of suits. I've got some sunflowers and a few courgettes that I've dotted around into this area. Oh my gosh, and the strawberries are just still so abundant. You just move the leaves around and they are tucked around everywhere. You just can't help but keep having a little snack of strawberries as you wander around. And my mint, which is in desperate need of a bit of a tidy up from the bramble. I must get round to that. And then here, oh my gosh, our mulberry tree. We are so excited about this mulberry tree. It was a new addition this winter. It was actually one of my Christmas presents. But every time we walk past, we just keep seeing these little berries forming up on it. And it's so exciting. Dan gets so excited when he walks past here. So I've been underplanting um, a lot of the fruit trees as well with things like um, dill and Sherville herbs and um, also these perennial red Welsh onions. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing how they grow. And under some of the other trees, I've got things like spinach and chard and other herbs. This one's got a little bit of mizuna from some seeds that I just scattered around. And another thing I'm really looking forward to growing is these edible lupins. And I've just popped a few seeds around under some of the trees here. And you can actually eat the um, seed pods, the little peas that will form off of these lupins. And they're also a really good nitrogen fixer as well. And we've also got my Shizandra vine down here, which will eventually have edible um, red berries that are actually um, adaptogens. Um, so really looking forward to seeing how that comes on. And it is apparently a really slow growing vine. So I am really happy to see that it's had a big growth spurt recently. And all of the autumn raspberries are really starting to kick into growth again now. I've actually got to work on cutting a few more paths through some of these bigger clumps um, and just working out where I want everything to go. But they are looking really healthy and lush and we are looking forward to getting lots and lots of autumn raspberries again this year. And if you've seen some of our other videos, you might know that we grow both red and yellow autumn raspberries here in our food forest. There's a few cherry plums forming up on this tree here. We had hoped for a bumper crop this year, which Dan was really excited about, uh, but we had a late frost and I think it's knocked quite a few of the fruit off this tree, which is a bit of a shame, but hopefully we will have some to enjoy. We've got two cherry trees in our food forest. And both of them are growing really well and really strongly. Um, but every year, the few cherries that we do get just seem to get completely stripped by the birds long before they even ripen. So we're not sure um, what we can do about that. So if you've got any experiences with cherry trees, um, any info that might be good to know, then feel free to share. And we've got our pink lemonade blueberry bush over here and this I think is a much later fruiting variety it's got a few little fruits forming up on it but this one has had a really big growth spurt this year so whether we might get a few less fruit that might be so and yeah we've just got more autumn raspberries dotted all around 
more strawberries as ground cover all down here. This place in a few more weeks time, I think is just gonna be absolutely teeming with fruit and life and goodness. So we are really looking forward to seeing how our food forest shapes up this summer. We hope you've enjoyed having a quick look around our food forest with us today. We are really excited about what is going on in here and we hope that it um, has given you some inspiration of things that you can try or maybe to start a food forest for yourself. Thanks for watching today guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on our videos and we will catch you here again soon. Peace and plants.